Hello and good afternoon. This video tutorial is going to be sort of the part two to how do you recover the root password on a CentOS 7.0 installation and I'm running on uh, it's a virtual machine VMware Fusion but the process is going to be the same as to whether you're doing a bare metal install uh, or you've done a bare metal install or you're running a VM. And so part one we took a look at how you would do the password recovery with SE Linux enabled. And so what we're going to do now, and specifically uh, to take a step back with the SE Linux enabled, um, we had to do the touch with the forward slash dot auto relabel specifically because SE Linux was enabled. And remember that that touch forward slash dot auto relabel tells SE Linux that uh, when it reboots, it's going to automatically relabel the file system. And typically this is only needed to be done uh, when you're changing your policy from either targeted to strict or if you've disabled and then re-enabled SE Linux. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to switch users over to the root user here and I think the password is, there it is, 12345. So if I were to type git enforce, you're going to see that it's enforcing SE Linux, right? If we cd to Etsy, SE Linux, and we cat the config file for SE Linux, you can also see that it's enforcing. So there's one of three values. It's either enforcing, permissive, or disabled. And then the SE Linux type is basically one of two values. Um, or well, I should say there's actually three values. You can take any one of those three of those values that are listed there. So targeted, minimum, and uh, MLS. So right now we're targeted. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to VI this file, and I'm going to disable SE Linux, right? So we'll reboot the VM, and when SE, or I should say when the uh, CentOS VM comes back up, SE Linux is going to be disabled, and we'll confirm it's disabled, and we're going to walk through the, the password reset or password recovery for the root user with SE Linux now disabled. And what we're going to see is that that touch forward slash dot auto relabel is only needed if SE Linux is enabled. And so let's log in here. And as soon as I can, I'll grow the size of the screen here. There we go. All right, make it a little easier for you to see. So let's go ahead and pull up the console window. Maximize it here. So if I were to switch user back to root, one, two, three, four, five, and then type git enforce, you'll see now that the SE Linux policy is disabled. So let's go ahead and do a password recovery. Right now the password is 12345. So if I were to reboot the VM, and the recovery process is identical to the previous process we saw. So I'm going to hit E, and it's going to allow us to uh, edit the bootloader parameters. So let's find that line. We're looking for that RO, and let me actually drag this center mass here for you. It's going to be a little small, unfortunately it uh, won't allow me to resize it. In fact, let me see if I go to a full screen view here and it actually full screen mode is disabled. So we're going to be working here for just a little bit. So again, in order to do the password recovery, the first thing we do is you would reboot the VM or your uh, your server and then you're going to hit the E to get in and edit the boot parameters. So I'm going to type in read write. So I've gone back over it said read only We've backed up over that. I'm going to say read write and then init equal slash sys root slash bin slash sh. Once that's been entered, I'm going to hit control X and this is going to go ahead and boot into recovery mode for me. And again, it's a little small. Can we go full screen here? Uh, view full screen. Let's do that. All right, so hopefully this is still recording. I'll double check. So now we've got a little larger view here. So the commands that I'm going to run from here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say change root to sysroot. And we're going to reset the root password. So password root, and I'll make it ABC123. 
A, B, C, one, two, three. Now, remember, when we had SE Linux enabled, I had to type in the command touch forward slash dot auto relabel. Okay, now I'm not going to run that command because we don't have SE Linux installed. So at this point, without SE Linux installed, I can type exit and then I'm going to simply reboot the system. And so now this is probably going to force it down into a much smaller view. And the hope is that it would leave it at the same size and hopefully we're going to be able to continue here. So this is perfect. So I'll hit enter and it's going to go ahead and complete the boot process for us. It does not have to relabel the file system because SE Linux was not running. And so this is typically it'll hold here for a few seconds and now we're back. And so that's what happens when SE Linux is disabled. And so let me log in here. Let's confirm that SE Linux is still disabled. And we'll start up the console window here. And we'll go full size. Let me get rid of that one there. All right, let me see if I can run it from here. So get enforced. So the SE Linux policy is still disabled. So again, the difference is with SE Linux enabled, and we saw this on the first video, you have to type in that touch space forward slash dot auto relabel. If you don't, when the system goes to come up, it's going to fail and the screen will just simply stay blank. We also saw in that first video that if that does happen, excuse me, that if that does happen to you, uh, in order to recover, you would simply re reboot your VM or your system and then go back in and walk through the steps again, ensuring that your last step and the last thing that you do is that you do do that touch forward slash dot auto relabel. However, here with SE Linux disabled, we do not need to relabel the file system. We can simply make the change to the password file. So the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm actually going to piggyback this topic in here, is what do we, when we boot the system up, you'll notice that it takes it, uh, we get the menu that prompts us, it says you have five seconds in order to make a choice. And one of the questions that a number of learners will ask me is, that just simply is too quick, how do I extend or how would I edit uh, the grub bootloader config file and specifically grub2. So when I, when I say grub, it's, it's grub2. Um, because with CentOS 7, grub2 is now what's used. It used to be that you would go into ABC123. It used to be that you would CD into the uh, Etsy directory and there would be some sort of a, a grub.conf file. And so you'll notice here there is no grub.conf. There's a grub2.cfg. Now, a quick note on this, if I CD, or actually I'm in Etsy here, so if I were to cat grub2.cfg, you'll notice that there is a wide ranging amount of information here and a lot of this, uh, it actually cuts off the screen. You can see here's the RO, so that's what we're seeing when the system boots up, right? So this is the config file that the system is going to read when it loads up and so this is going to provide us with the menu. Now the key thing here is is that where you used to be able to directly edit the grub.conf you can no longer directly edit this grub uh, I'm sorry where are we at grub.cfg there we are down here at the bottom and I'm sorry, I think we have to go into, it's a grub, is it grub.d? There we go. So grub.d and actually we're one up, ls-lai, and where's the grub at? Where is that? I thought it was sitting right there. It should be, oh, grub2, I apologize. So, right, you can see that it's a link to slash boot uh, grub2.grubcfg. However, I can't make changes directly or edits directly to this file. So if I wanted to extend that uh, initial boot sequence out to 60 seconds, what I have to do is I have to go into the Etsy default, D-E-F-A-U-L-T slash grub, and Etsy default, 
or defaults, whoops, sorry about that. Etsy default and grub. And it's actually, the file is right there. So the Etsy default grub file is the file that I want would want to edit and this is where you're going to make your changes. You're not going to make them directly uh, to that symbolic link, grub2.cfg, which actually links out to slash boot slash uh, grub2 slash grub.cfg. So how would I extend the timeout? So let's VI the grub file, right? And you can see it's pretty straightforward. You've got your grub timeout, grub distributor, grub default. So different menu options that you can pick from, right? Command line Linux. And so this is where the grub file is going to get its settings, right? So if I were to come down here and say grub timeout 60, right? I'm going to save the file and now this is key. So what I have to do now in order to ensure that the grub.cfg file, the one that we can't, it's located in slash boot slash grub2 uh, slash grub2, what I would have to do is I'd have to grub2.make config, right, dash O for the output file, which is going to be the actual file boot grub2 grub.cfg. Now it's interesting that it's grub2, it's in the grub2 directory. However, when you get to the config file, just like the one we edited, the name is still just grub. They didn't put a two here for whatever reason. So this command, when run, as you can see, it's going to go out and find all the kernel images that it can because those are the ones that are going to show up as our menu choices. These same kernels in the boot directory that get listed here, right, and you can see the init RAM disk entries that we get as well for the RAM file system. So this is where it pulls in the information for the kernel. So if I had compiled a new kernel and put it into boot and I wanted it to show up as a choice and I'm going to do a video about that the way that you would do that is you would simply go ahead and run your make config on the uh, with the grub2 dash make config and it's going to look in the boot uh, directory find the kernel for you and then make that entry in the menu so we've just updated the grub2 dash make config now let's see what happens here uh, we change the timeout to 60. Let's see what happens here when we reboot now. And so what we would expect to see is at the bottom of the screen where the timeout was four seconds and there it is. I don't have a mouse right now but if you look in the bottom uh, right hand corner there you can see 5150. So that has now allowed us to make that configuration change. And so uh, just wanted to piggyback this one onto how do you change or how do you recover your root password and reset it if you did not know it or if you forgot the root password on your CentOS 7 install. All right, so I'll hit enter here and then I'm going to get us out of full screen mode. And I'm hoping that it actually was able to continue the recording on that. So we'll find out here shortly. If I pull the VM up, let's get the menu up and view single window, and there we go. All right, so that is how you recover the root password without SE Linux enabled, and that's also how you would edit your grub2.cfg uh, file. Well, you'd actually edit the Etsy default grub file and then run your grub2-make config to make those changes. All right, thank you for watching and have a wonderful holiday season.